called a power valve. It's basically a, an engine vacuum actuated sort of uh, high power fuel circuit. If I unscrew it here, you can see what happens is, I'm gonna take the little gasket off. <clears throat> there's a, a hole where fuel can get through. And then inside here, there's two little jet restrictors that can also be tuned. You can take a screwdriver, you can put it in there and unscrew that, and you can put a bigger or a smaller restrictor there. That's called a power valve restrictor channel. And what a lot of people don't know is that the numbers on the power valve, for example, this one's got a 5.5. Well, that indicates when the fuel gets delivered through that high power circuit, not necessarily how much. I've heard people talk about, oh, well, I have a, I've got a high flow power valve, so I'm gonna get more fuel. You're really not because it's the size of the orifice and the power valve channel restriction that controls how much fuel you get. Your power valve, for example, this one's 5.5, means that whenever the engine vacuum is below 5.5 inches, meaning when you open the throttle, that's when this spring-loaded vacuum actuated circuit will open and at any manifold vacuum below that value, it'll supply fuel from the circuit through those channel restrictions. But having a bigger or a smaller number of power valves is not gonna give you more fuel, just earlier or later delivery to that, that fuel. Now along the side here, there's a series of one, two, three, four, five on either side. Those are called emulsification air bleeds. Their job is to mix air and fuel before it gets into the metering circuit and goes into the actual booster venturis in the carburetor there that are supplying it to the engine. So the really sophisticated tuners can get in there and change the size and amount of those air bleeds. Some of them you can plug off if you wanna take air away, you can put bigger holes if you wanna you know, put more air in and so on and so forth. And on the other side, on the, on the side here, you can see those are our idle mixture screws. Again, the idle mixture is really controlled by the size of the idle air bleed here. So that screw goes through, there's a little channel that comes up here, and that's called an IFR, an idle feed restriction. So my idle feed restriction really determines, you know, what kind of fuel mixture I'm actually gonna get, whereas, you know, your screw is just moving the volume of air and fuel that's going through that restrictor. So what I'm getting at is, I'm not asking you to be an expert carburetor tuner because I certainly am not, but you can see that there's a lot more going on here than just taking out of the box, changing some jets, swapping in a power valve and going, hey, I'm a tuner. Well, the same thing happens a lot in your EFI system where guys go, I got a base map and my engine starts up and runs. It's not perfect, but it's okay. And then they just go plus, 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 or minus, 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 and now I'm a tuner. Problem is when you get into that scenario, it's real easy to have a startup calibration that's not great, that's a little bit off. Keith was talking about getting excess fuel and diluting the oil on the side of the cylinder wall. So if we don't get the tune-up right immediately, we can run into problems with actual engine health you know, pretty quickly and of course even down the road. But I, I wanted to point this out mainly because I get so many people say, oh, carburetors are simple. And I'm like, they're not simple. The work has just already been done for you. And uh, where the trouble comes is when guys switch from carburetors to EFI. So Holly realized that that was a problem. And they said, well, what if we made an EFI system that walks and talks and looks and smells like a carburetor, but has all the benefits of EFI? So you can really see the difference here. I've got this fuel bowl off. In this fuel, I took it off and there's floats and there's an accelerator pump and there's a metering block and jets and a power valve and restrictors, all these tiny little pieces Actually, the EFI side's a lot more simpler. What we have inside the bowl here is, the bowl's just a decorative color cover for these four fuel injectors. And of course, there's four more on the other side as well. And then this little electric motor here is controlled by the computer. That's, a, that's basically a plug that opens or closes in the uh, idle bypass restriction. So if I want the idle speed to increase, it just takes that little motor and uncovers the hole and more air bypasses. And of course, it's dynamic. It can happen in real time. Difference between that and the carburetor? Well, if I don't like the idle speed on the carburetor, I gotta open the hood and walk out there with my screwdriver and fiddle around with it and go, okay, I finally got it good. And then I close the hood and I get back in the car and I drive around and I go to a different location or a different racetrack or the weather changes. Now the carburetor needs some adjustment again. I gotta play around with all those circuits, play with my idle settings, play with my bleeds. So even though eventually we got to the point where we could make the same amount of power on the dyno, the difference was, in my in my Holly you know Terminator X4500, I just put a couple of parameters in and asked a few basic questions, which I answered. The engine started and ran, and it had a tune-up that was super close. My carburetor started up and ran, but in order to get it to make the same kind of power that EFI did, it took a lot of work. I'll bet you we spent 
somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 dyno pulls changing things in the carburetor to eventually finally get it just as good as what took about two dyno pulls with the Terminator X4500 here. And the real difference is now I can put the Terminator X on the, in the, you know, put the engine in the car and go. I go race in Denver. I go race in, you know, uh, Death Valley, California. I go to Florida. I go to Wisconsin. Doesn't make any difference because it's constantly making changes uh, to keep the tune up the same. Carburetor, eh, not so much. So what I'll do is I'll point out some stuff for you here. I'll bring my laptop over so you guys can see it a little bit better. This is the main fuel table in the Holley Terminator uh, X for that sniper system. So you have your fuel injectors, you have your throttle body that looks and acts just like a carburetor, but basically this table here is our main metering system. So all of your, this is manifold vacuum here, and this is RPM here. The values in the table are simply just how much fuel the engine is going to receive at that point. Now, that is, just like our carburetor, the overall kind of mixture control. But in the carburetor, we have a lot of little extra circuits, like, for example, the idle circuit, right? Well, we have that. If we go over here, there's a little icon that looks like a tachometer. And I press on that, and it's got little settings for what is the idle speed that you want based on the engine temperature. How many of you guys have ever had a carburetor that idled good when it was cold, then you had to fiddle with it when it was hot? Or maybe it was great when it was hot, but it didn't do that good when it was cold. One of the advantages of the Terminator X, right, is say at each temperature, I can pick the idle speed I want and it automatically does that. What a great advantage. So you're not trying to get that thing working right and protect your hard earned you know, effort and money that you spent getting the machine work and the engine right, worrying about the tune up changing all the time. So once, we, uh, once we've got it idling and we're pretty happy with our little base tune up here, we go down here and we go, what's this table? This is my accelerator pump on the carburetor. There's a little lever, a mechanical lever here that sits on the side and it actually goes this way. So as you move the throttle linkage, it presses on that lever. Fuel enters from the bowl down into the little uh, diaphragm reservoir. And when you squirt this, it goes poop and it squirts a bunch of fuel right out into the engine just to cover up that dead spot. When you start opening the throttle quickly, the air rushes in and it takes a little moment for the fuel to get in through the uh, metering block and through the restrictors and into your, your uh, discharge there at the Venturi. So in your EFI system, just like you had there, you have a table, you go in and it's how fast you're moving the throttle and how much extra fuel it should get. So now I have a tweakable, tunable accelerator pump system. In the carburetor, I had to change the cans and I had to change the squirter size and all that kind of stuff. And it was constantly working on it, draining the fuel bowls, filling them back up. You can ultimately do the same thing with a carburetor or an EFI system. The difference is my hands don't smell like gas when I use the EFI system. So what I wanna do is Maybe you're the guy that's thinking, that all sounds great, but I'm really intimidated by this software. That, that laptop thing, plug in the cable, that's scary. You know what? Holly's got an answer for that too. You come over here, it's got a little handheld three and a half inch screen. It's touch screen. It's got one little plug in. What I'll do is I'll take you guys over to the dyno and I got one of these things sitting there ready to run. We'll plug this in and I'll show you just how easy it is for you to go boop, boop, boop and get your engine up and running. That way you don't have to be a tuning expert. Just like when you bought a Holley carburetor and it worked out of the box, with a few simple questions that you answer here, now you've got an EFI system that will just work out of the box. You're gonna be happier because your engine runs right, you're not washing that fuel off the cylinder wall and hurting the piston rings, and you're ready to go a lot sooner. And you know what? The end goal is to make a bunch of power and go play with the car. Not necessarily have a million tools available that I can tweak and tune. I don't wanna do that part. I wanna go play with the car. So I'll tell you what, let's plug this thing in and go check it out. All right, guys, welcome to the dyno cell. Before we wrap this whole thing up, I want to give you a first hand look at what it takes to make one of these things work. So I got one of our uh, dyno mules here from the school. This is a 350 inch, uh, basically uh, loosely based LS7 engine. So uh, pretty much an engine's an engine. About the only difference with this one is we run a lot of different configurations of ignition setups and cranks and cam triggers and things like that. So if you wanted to customize your Terminator X, you could certainly do that. But if you have the more traditional small block, big block, and you just have a distributor and maybe, you know, maybe a good old MSD box, anything like that, super easy to hook this thing up. So let's walk through it real quick. First, what you have is the actual ECU, the engine control unit. And the Terminator X is cool because remember, you don't have to have a laptop. Even on the top here, it's got some LEDs, and I'll show you how they work real quick. Keith, if you don't mind, walk over and hit the ignition switch for me, the red button there on the dyno. 
All the way, there you go, yep, go ahead. Uh, just flip it on, and you'll see a bunch of lights come on up here. And what these lights do is they give me information about this system without me having to hook up a laptop. The first one here just tells me if the ECU has power. Why do I care about that? Well, a lot of times guys will say, I can't get my laptop to connect. Well, how do I know if it's a comms connection issue or if it's just I don't have power to the computer? Well, there's a light to tell you that. Then it's got status lights for whether or not the engine is running, whether the throttle position sensor is calibrated correctly, whether the O2 sensor is working. It's got lights to tell me the crank and the cam you know, are okay. So when you're trying to start your engine and it's not behaving and you wonder why, you can just refer to those lights and your little quick start user manual, you'll figure it out right away. And you go, oh, look, I left that connector unplugged. So that's the first thing. You can go ahead and shut that off for now just so we don't have any issues. There's a little hose here. There's an internal manifold pressure sensor. That's like your vacuum sensor, if you will. Now all you gotta do is connect your rubber hose, go to your intake manifold, boom, that's set up for you. Now, two connectors on the harness. You open the box, you get your ECU out, you pull the harness out, it's set up for this Terminator X4500. You really don't have to do much of anything other than plug that in, come over here. There's two connectors that go to your throttle body and inside the throttle body I have all my injectors. Got my idle control valve, got my throttle position sensor, comes over here and we have an intake air temperature that could go into your air cleaner or your hood scoop or whatever, or you can put it down here into the manifold, wherever you like. You have an ignition connector that you plug in and that'll go to your distributor, or in my case, my crank and cam sensors. I have over here, coolant temperature. Lastly, got an oxygen sensor that's in the exhaust. That's about it. You're gonna hook up power, ground and 12 volt switched ignition, and you're gonna be ready to go. Now, again, I said you don't have to have a laptop because Holly gave us a three and a half inch touchscreen controller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how easy it is to plug this thing in. Come on over here, and as I come down the harness, you'll see there's labeled connectors that say CAM. They match this connector. I'm just gonna simply plug this thing in real quick. It only goes one way. You really can't mess it up. And Keith, if you'd hit the power for me again, as soon as we hit the power, I can see I got power up there. Now my screen is live. Now Lake, I'm gonna have you come in real close here and show you how easy it would be to set up a brand new configuration. Can you see here where it says wizards? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch wizard and I wanna create a new global config file for this brand new engine that's never ran before. And I wanna make sure I get it right so I don't have issues with my ring seal and cylinder wall washing and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna to touch that and I tell it, is it multi-port injection? throttle body injected or direct injected? Well, for ours, obviously the Sniper uh, 4500 throttle body is a TBI. I hit next. Oops, sorry, TBI and then next. Now it just gives me parts numbers. Do you have a 4150 with four injectors, eight injectors, or do you have a Stealth 4500? Obviously, we have the Stealth. We go next. I tell it, how many cylinders does it have? Well, it's eight. And then I'm gonna put the engine size in cubic inches here. This one happens to be 350 and I'll hit save and I'll go next. What's my target idle speed? This thing has a lot of camshaft, so I might want to have an idle speed of let's say 1400. Boom, save that, pretty easy so far. Next, how big is your camshaft? It says below 235 degree, degrees, between 235 and 260 and above 260. Well, this one's a little bit above that and I'll go next. What type of ignition? If you have a GM LS, LSX uh, with 2458, or you just got a coil CD box, CD box would be like if you had an MSD. So let's say we got that. And I say next, oops, sorry, next. And then your fuel pressure, 43 or 60. Mine said it's 60. I go next and check it out. This is really cool. Now it asks me, do you have any power adders? Do you have nitrous, turbo, supercharger? Remember, if you had a carburetor and you had an old reliable engine that's been running and you decide, you know what, everybody's doing all the cool stuff these days, I wanna add boost, you're gonna to have to send that carburetor around and get all that recalibration work done, set it up for pressurization if you're doing blow through or draw through. There's a lot of work that goes into making a carburetor work. And honestly, a lot of guys run into trouble with you know, ring seal from the tune up not, not being right, you know, all those other problems. Here, it's literally click a button. Now, my engine doesn't have power adders, so uh, I'm just gonna go next and say none. And then I'm gonna tell it, now there's a connector here. If I wanna add that power adder, I can just plug in a multi-bar map sensor, two bar, three bar, you know, whatever I want there. 
But remember, there's one internal to the box that I'm using, so I'm just gonna click internal one bar. And that's it, it's ready. All I do now is say start, it will load that file in, and you're ready to start. So I'm not gonna load this particular one in because we said it had an MSD box and I really have uh, LSX triggers, but that's it. I hit start, we can load it in, we'll cycle the ignition, we'll go out there and see if this thing runs. Once I do that though, I can come back now, and again, I'm riding around in my car or I'm in the garage and I wanna see what's going on. You can come over here and you can tune it. It's got some advanced features where you can select functionality, but most people use this multi-gauge monitor here and you can see what all the sensors are doing. I've got manifold, coolant temp, throttle position, you know, my ignition timing, all that stuff is displayed right there on the screen for you and you can make tweaks and adjustments from the screen without having to use the laptop. Now, if you want to be fancy, you get really in depth and you really want to tweak and tune, that's what the laptop software is for. And it has way more functionalities and features, but not everybody wants that, which is what makes the handheld really nice. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put this away. Let's walk out there and see if this thing will start. All right, guys, we're here at the console. I got everything hooked up. And uh, basically I have my software here. I can see on my laptop or on the big screen and I can see all the live data as I'm doing a run. But all I really needed to do was, you know, load that calibration in there and tell it I got this camshaft, this engine size, whatever. Then I can come out here and get the engine started. So basically I got the ignition on, I got fuel pressure. Let's see what happens. Here we go. You can see it fires up and that idle circuit is already working with the bypass valve to try to target my speed. So now I just let the O2 sensor correct to my target, we're good to go.